Today I'm remaking Skyrim in a week with Unreal Engine and C++ and since I can add any features I like, I'm going to add multiplayer because Unreal Engine has excellent support for it. And also, because I just want to kill a noob and take his armor. Really quick, if you want to download the Skyrim remake and mess about with the project files, the link is in the description to buy it on the Patreon for $25. You also get my 40 part video series showing you how to make an online survival game with Unreal Engine and deploy it on Steam so you can play it with your friends. So if you're interested in that, the link will be in the description. So I think that the core of Skyrim is your player, so I'm going to start with that. And we need a system to handle attributes like stamina, magicka and health, so I decided to use Gameplay Ability System, otherwise known as GAS. It comes with Unreal Engine and it supports multiplayer, so it's an excellent fit for an online Skyrim remake. So first, I'll enable the plugin, and then I'll add some code to tell GAS that we want three attributes called Stamina, Magicka, and Health. Finally, I'll create some basic UI bars that animate using this amazing Photoshop file I found online, and now we can see these attributes in game. And look how happy this guy is to get his cute little progress bar working. This is before reality set in that if I want to get this game done in a week, I'm probably not going to go outside. So because I'm cheap and hate spending money, I had this old medieval modular character that I bought years ago, and I'm just going to reuse that. So I add this to the character, and then I use the master pose component to sync all the different body pieces up. And to allow for both third and first person, I hook the scroll wheel up to the camera length. So as you scroll, the camera zooms in. And then when it gets close enough, we check and change from third to first person, and then you can go back out again. One of the biggest parts of Skyrim for me was exploring, and I felt that the compass was a pretty good fit for my next thing to try and do. So I took the assets from my handy Photoshop document, I created some UI in the editor, and then I created compass components, and I made them components so that they can be added to enemies, caves, towns, quest locations, and anything else we'd want to show on the player's compass. And check it out, we've got ourselves a compass. Now any of you walk up to a person, or a door, or a goddamn cabbage, I don't know, you'll find a little prompt saying press E to do something. Now this is an interaction system, and it's my next thing to create. So basically I just copied and pasted the one from my survival game course, which you can get on the Patreon, link in description, and it's really simple. We find the thing that you're looking at, we store it, and if you're still looking at it when you press E, we tell the interaction component, and it can do whatever the interactable needs to do. Here's an NPC. It's hooked up to begin talking to you. Here's a cabbage. It's hooked up to add itself to your inventory. Here's a chest. It's hooked up to be looted. At this point I also decided to add AI to the game. These use the exact same code under the hood that our player actually uses, meaning they can do all the same stuff like hold items, equip weapons and armor, and attack, only instead of using WASD to move, they use behavior trees to drive their movement and attacking. They don't do anything yet, except I did add an interaction component to them, so that once my dialogue system is in, you will be able to talk to them. Building an item and inventory system might take 3 hours, but building an online item system could easily take 20 hours. Networking adds a huge amount of complexity to any game. So here's how I made it. Inventories hold items, and are made as components. This means we can give anything in the game an inventory. Players get an inventory, NPCs get an inventory, loadable chests get inventories, because all these things hold items. Add some code for adding and removing items, write some custom networking code to get items syncing properly across different players in the game, and now you've got an inventory system, but now we need some UI to actually interact with our items. So the inventory UI, it's multi-purpose. You can tell it to open your inventory, or you can tell it to view another inventory, this could be a shop, or when looting a chest or a dead player. The item preview is just a camera on the player, and it renders the item to a texture and then it displays that on the UI. A little bit of blueprint code then listens to you dragging your mouse around and will in turn rotate the item. This was one of the most fun things to make, and given enough time I would happily remake this entire system, but I had to move on to... The world map was really fun to create, and one of the advantages of my Skyrim remake is that the entire world is loaded in at all times. 
And this means that we can fast travel without loading screens, which is pretty awesome. And Fortnite does this as well, and it's why you can see the entire world after you jump out of the plane. Now to allow for custom markers, we do a line trace, or you might know it as a ray cast, under the mouse cursor, and then we place an invisible point that adds a marker. I also decided to let the marker be visible in-game, since I wanted this feature, and it wasn't in the original Skyrim. For the map I used Landscape Mountains, a tech demo from Epic Games themselves. It's pretty old at this point, but I love it because it's free, well optimized, and it means we don't have to make an open world ourselves, which is really time consuming to do. So at this point we had a couple of minor systems down, but Skyrim is carried by quests and dialogue, so we're going to start now with a dialogue system. Now if you remember my narrative quest editor from the last video, it now has a dialogue system built into it. And it comes with a dialogue designer as well. Here's the dialogue for Balathor. He usually appears in the shop in Whiterun, and you can see an example of a conditional dialogue. In this case, we only show this piece of dialogue during a quest that Balathor gives to the player. Dialogues also have events. This open shop option will actually fire an event that will then open up Balathor's shop. In this piece of dialogue, Balthor gives the player a quest to find a stolen keg of beer. And then finally, we have a few looping dialogues, meaning once Balthor finishes, the player can then ask another question, so it loops back to the start. This is where things get really tricky. In Skyrim, NPCs' faces animate while they talk, and a lot of games don't even bother implementing facial animation at all, because it's a really hard system to implement. But luckily for me, I have access to the same goddamn facial animation system that Bethesda themselves used to make Skyrim, and it's called FaceFX. So I take my horrible voice acting, I send it to FaceFX, and then FaceFX automatically generates facial animations from just the audio, and I'm honestly not sure how this works, but I really love this tool, I think it's so cool. Now before I show you the final dialogue system, you may have noticed that every character in the game has this ugly ass bald guy as the face. This is because the somehow even uglier old character doesn't have bones in his face, only in his body, so his body can animate, but not his face. So I could pay an animator thousands of dollars to rig the face to animate, but FaceFX kindly provide this demo face, so being the huge bodger that I am, I literally just stitch this second head onto the original body. I use this really cool look at node that comes with Unreal Engine so that the AI actually look at the player as the player walks around just like they do in Skyrim. So at this point we've reached a very exciting point in our journey, which is we've weaved enough systems together at this point we can make a super simple quest. So I've created a new NPC called Hubert, and he absolutely loves cabbage, and he needs you to get 10 cabbages for him. Yes, I said the quest was simple, not interesting. Every time an item is obtained, we fire off a narrative action telling narrative we've taken an item and what the item was. What this means is we can now design quests where the player has to find a certain item, aka half of all quests in Skyrim. Here's a look at the really simple quest design with two steps in it. Step one, find the cabbages. Step two, select the dialogue option where we hand the cabbages over, and that's pretty much the quest. The quest is started when you select a certain dialogue option. You can see this one here is hooked up to begin the quest. And then I added a hidden dialogue that appears after you complete this quest where you can have Hubert as a follower. And you can also store items with him just like you can in actual Skyrim. Now there was absolutely no way that I was going to remake Skyrim and not add shouts, and the most fun one to recreate is the Fusrodar shout. It seems pretty easy too, right? We just grab all the physics objects in a cone starting from the player, and then add an impulse to them. But where am I going to get the Fusrodar audio from? Once again, I had to step into the recording booth and produce some top-notch voice acting. Let's go, let's go. Fusrodar! Fuck, my voice cracked. And now that we have our incredible shout audio recorded, let's implement the shout. Gameplay ability system has the concept of ability, so I made one of those and then bound it to the Z key, which is the shout key in Skyrim. And then we do a collision check for any physics objects and apply an impulse to them. Force, well, die. Force, 
Rota! Boss, Rota! For melee combat, I added an ability, just like the shout that handles the melee attack. I actually followed my own tutorial for this, which was really weird. Yup, okay thanks man, very interesting, goodbye. But I built onto it to add both light and also heavy attacks if you long press the right mouse button just to make it a bit more like Skyrim. And then the attacks themselves are pretty interesting because they use a feature called Root Motion, which is a pretty cool Unreal Engine feature that lets the animation drive the player's movement instead of WASD. And this gives you really clean looking attack animations. So what we do is we play a swing animation and when the player's swing reaches its middle, we check for a hit. And if we've hit an enemy, we apply something called a gameplay effect to the person that you've hit. And all the gameplay effect is, is it's just something that modifies an attribute like your health, stamina or magicka. In this case, it's the enemy's health attribute and we're subtracting from it when you hit them. And while we're on gameplay effects, we do the exact same thing for consumable items. When you click on them, we use a gameplay effect that adds to your health, or even other attributes like stamina, as you can see with this stew here, it adds to your health and stamina attributes. And we also use gameplay effects to slowly recharge your attributes over time, because in Skyrim, your health, stamina, etc, they slowly increase over time, so we needed a gameplay effect for that as well. Okay, Ruben from the future here, I just finished editing the video, and I realized I never show you me equipping any armor or clothing pieces. I don't know why I didn't show this, but anyways, here you go. And uh, also I changed the armor to a t-shirt, but you get the idea. Since bots are just players that are controlled by behavior trees instead of mouse and keyboard, they can literally do everything that the player can. And in bots' behavior trees, if they have an attack target set, they will draw their weapon and become aggressive. Their melee is the exact same one that we do, only difference is we click the left mouse button to do it, bots will automatically activate it if they are close enough to attack. If you caught my last video on GTA, they work the exact same way, where if the bot loses track of you, he'll try and find where you went to using your last known location. And we also have some extra logic to allow the bot to be your companion and follow you around. Another thing that I always wanted to create was those goddamn puzzle doors. Now, I started by creating a ring with an interaction component on it, and when you interact, we rotate the ring and remember what item is selected. Then I made some doors, added three rings, scaling them so that they fit inside each other. And then the middle one is the keyhole, and this is only interactable if you have the golden claw. We grab every ring and see if each one matches the preset combination. If it does, we then animate the door to open using a special UE4 feature called a timeline. We've reached that time again, just like in the GTA video. We're going to make the final quest to end all final quests. Now with that Skyrim remake, we have the chance to make a much cooler final quest than was ever in the original Skyrim. And I've got just the idea. Balathor wants to have a party. But his keg of beer got stolen. So you have to ask around the town for leads. And that crazy preaching guy from Whiterun happens to know some info. Time real. I, and as man said, let me show you the power of Talos Stormcrown, born of the North. You bribe him, and he tells you where the keg might be. I might? What's it to you? Fine! A group of peasants moved into that weird, mysterious shack across the lake. Oh, I saw them snooping around here. I'll bet they took it. You travel to the abandoned hut, find the claw nearby, sure enough you find Balathor's stolen keg of beer inside. But some loser is guarding it, so you gotta take him out, take the keg, give it back to Balathor, quest complete. I love what he saw in us, in each of us, the future of Skyrim. The future of take away your face. You find so my what beer? What then? Ah, the elves take your thanks home? a lot. Your business Here's your gold. Your children? Your very also, and what does I got a mind? weird feeling. Nothing. Nine. I think you should hit the Worse subscribe button right now. Really quick, if you want to download the Skyrim remake and mess about with the project files, the link is in the description to buy it on the Patreon for $25. You also get my 40 part video series showing you how to make an online survival game with Unreal Engine and deploy it on Steam so you can play it with your friends. So if you're interested in that, the link will be in the description.